Hello, I am Seamus Donahue of Eve University, and this is episode two of the February 2018 edition of How to Survive Eve Online. In this episode, I will be covering the military career uh, agent. So, for the record, I believe it's been roughly... I believe it's been roughly 12 hours since I finished filming episode one. Uh, my character skills since then... Uh, is there a history on this? Here we go. Skills. Uh, so my skills since then, I have trained Small Hybrid Turret level 2 and Galente Frigate level 2. Uh, not very much. Uh, all I've done since then is, from the moment I logged off, is I flew my Velator to here, Clelanon. And again, the particular career funnel hub you're going to be directed to depends on the race of your character and the school that you chose. Um, in general, you will want to go to the agency, the suggested tab, and look for the career path agents, and set uh, the set destination option will be here near the lower right corner of the agency window. All right. Then just follow the yellow Stargate icons until you get to the station. When you arrive in the solar system, there will only be one station. You're looking for a square icon. So I came to Clelanon, dropped off my stuff. Uh, what I then did was I right-clicked my Velator, selected Leave Ship. That put me in a capsule. I then went to my Personal Assets window. I right-clicked on Sistavere. Uh, that's where the venture was, because I'd left it behind. I right-clicked on Sistavair, set destination, then right-clicked on Clelanon, add waypoint. Then I undocked, went to Sistavair, docked, got in my venture, undocked, came back to Clelanon, and now my venture is here. We're not going to need the venture for this episode. Uh, this will be mostly combat. So I'm going to get in the Velator. Uh, I only have two weapons, the civilian Gatling gun and the 125mm. Uh, so I'm going to go to view market details, and I am going to get a 125mm railgun. And there are some available for sale here in Clelanon. By the way, uh, looking at the market window, uh, you can left-click any of these headers to sort by that header. I recommend sorting by price with the lowest prices at the top. If you've got a significantly less expensive price for whatever item it is you're trying to buy somewhere else, you may want to right-click, location, set destination, then go up here in the upper left corner for your current station, right-click, add waypoint. But I don't intend to do that right now, so I'm just going to clear all waypoints. I'm going to be using um, railguns. Uh, what type of weapon is mostly up to you. If you're playing in a Marian character, you'll want to get uh, energy turrets. Uh, if you're playing a Minmatar character, you're going to want to get projectile turrets. Uh, Kaldari and Minmatar could use missiles. Um, Kaldari characters will probably want hybrid turrets or missiles. In regards to which turrets you want to use, um, the short-range turrets are fine if you're going to get in close. Uh, the short ranges being pulse lasers or auto cannons. Hold on. Let me turn off show only available. Let me set this to region. There we go. The short-range turrets are auto cannons, pulse lasers, and blasters. The long ranges are beam lasers, railguns, and artillery cannons. Uh, I'm going to go with railguns. So I have to make sure I'm not orbiting too close, otherwise I'm going to have a hell of a time trying to hit anything. So just as a note, I'm going to put the two railguns on here, shift, click, and drag one onto the other to group them. That way I only need to use one button to activate them. I want a real afterburner. Uh, I want my armor repairer. 
And I will also want my civilian damage control. I will not want my civilian damage control. So yeah, fitting modules to a ship besides taking up a slot also requires resources. The power grid and the CPU. I don't have enough power grid to mount the um, civilian damage control on top of everything else. So. Load my weapons with ammunition. Put the rest of the ammunition in my cargo hold. Let me actually talk to this agent. All right. Go to a location, kill some pirates, come back. Simple. And this will be right here in Clolanon, so I don't have to go anywhere. Well, I don't have to go through any stargates. Right click empty space. Cash flow for capsuleers, encounter, warp to location. By the way, these concentric circles are part of the tactical overlay. That's controlled by a button over here. By default, it should be control D. If you don't like any of the um, shortcuts that the game sets by default, you can always go to the escape menu, the shortcuts tab, and set key bindings that are more to your liking. Just right-click any of them and either edit or clear shortcut. Just be forewarned, if you want to set a shortcut to W, and something already uses W, you'll have to clear the existing W shortcut first. Let's see. Fall off within 10 kilometers... That's a little bit far away. My chances to hit are low. There we go. That's better. Uh, let me click this menu icon down here. Uh, display empty module slots. Display readout not as a percentage. Uh, configure ship health alert settings. Armor alert threshold. I'm going to bump that up to 90%. Shield alert threshold. Uh, I'll set, also set that at 90%. Let me loot this real quick, see if there's... Huh. Yep, starting with career funnel hubs, you will definitely want to start looting and salvaging. I'll explain what salvaging is towards the end of the episode. Uh, but for now, I'm going to right-click the wreck and save location, Corelli Initiate Wreck. Oh, they're coming at me from different directions. That's what's going on. I'll double click in that direction. By the way, with the tactical overlay turned on, you'll also have a little blue circle indicating which direction your ship is currently flying in. Or your which direction your ship thinks you want it to fly in. Even with an afterburner, it does take some time to cover these distances. There are ways that I can improve that situation. Um, there are a lot of skills that one can train in EVE Online. Some skills are prerequisites for ships and modules. So, for example, the incursus that we flew last episode, that I flew last episode, um, required at least Galente Frigate level 1. 
Uh, something I didn't cover, however, is that the Galente Frigate skill uh, also provided bonuses. So certain things about the... Hold on. Am I going to make it into warp? Yes. Yes, I will. I thought I was going to bump the rock before warping. So some aspects of the Incursus would perform better uh, if I had higher levels of Galente Frigate trained. So the Galente Frigate skill is both a prerequisite, but it also provides bonuses. Same deal for a lot of the modules in EVE Online. So in the navigation category, there's a skill called Acceleration Control. 5% bonus to Afterburner and Micro Warp Drive speed boost for every level of Acceleration Control. I don't have that skill on this character yet. I didn't start off with it, so I would have to go to the market and uh, buy the Acceleration Control skill book. So if I right-click on this and view market details, 40,000 interstellar credits. I don't know if the... Uh, I don't remember if the tutorials here will give me that particular skill book for free. I do recall that they give some skill books for free, but I don't remember which ones anymore. All right, let me request the next mission. Uh, eliminate some pirates, pick up some civilians from the wreck. Also here in Clawlon. Let me drop that off. Right-click empty space, warp to location. And the other way I could warp to location, besides doing right-click empty space, agent missions, cash flow for capsuleers, encounter dead space, warp to location, I could also have gone over here under agent missions, expanded, th clicked on this, and also selected warp to location. That would also work. These sections over here can be displayed or hidden by clicking on these icons to hide those things. I always like to show my location all the time. Just because I like to always be aware of where it is that I am. also like to keep on route and agent missions. Right-click, save location, Corelli initiate rec. I'll just click submit. Generally speaking, uh, you'll only need to bookmark one cluster of wrecks at a time. So if you can see the other wrecks on overview, you only need one bookmark for the whole set. Generally speaking, we're talking about up to a few thousand kilometers away. You don't need a separate bookmark for every single wreck. Um, since this is nearby, I'll just loot it real quick. All right. Done. And return to station. And I do have the civilians. I picked them up from one of the other, con uh, from one of the containers, I think.
So this mission here has an icon next to it, a down arrow pointing towards a horizontal line that indicates that you have to, that you have something that you need to deliver somewhere to complete the mission. If I only needed to kill pirates and then leave, that would be a green check mark. But since I actually have to bring something somewhere, or in this case bring someone somewhere, that's the icon. And I haven't done that yet. Talk to the agent. Uh, and they give me an Atron. I'll request the next mission. Uh, and they want me to kill some pirates, get something, bring it back. Easy. Not complicated. Since I now have the Atron, I'm going to uh, strip fitting on the Velator. Assemble the Atron. And just as a general policy, I also changed the name of it so that it doesn't include my own name. Uh, I won't go into detail, but the reason you always want to change the name of the ship when you assemble it so that it doesn't include your own name is because the name of the ship is visible to other players through something called a directional scanner. Uh, I'm not going to go into detail about that in this episode, but just be aware of that. Don't use the default name of a ship. Always change the name. Uh, and looks like one of the missions gave me ammunition as a reward. That's good. Um, I'm going to need the afterburner. Armor repair. Can I fit the damage control? Along with everything else. You know what? They give me three railguns of the same type. Try to use... Always try to use weapons of the same type, generally speaking. Rather than trying to mix different gun types. Because you want to be able to use all of your... Different weapons have different ranges and different tracking speeds. And if you're mixing and matching different types of guns, then that means you can't bring all of your firepower to bear all at once. Only some of your guns are going to be able to hit at any given time, and that's generally not good. Alright, I don't need to bring anything else with me. Uh, you know what? Do I have the power grid for a micro-warp drive? As a matter of fact, I do. So I'll use a micro-warp drive instead. That'll save some time in some cases. So, Micro Warp Drives and Afterburners are both mid-slot modules that eat some of your capacitor energy to make you go faster. Uh, they differ in the following ways. A Micro Warp Drive provides a much bigger speed boost. It eats more capacitor energy per second. Like, let me right-click and show information. Um, so, bigger speed boost. It eats more capacitor energy per, per second, but it also penalizes the size of your capacitor, and while you've got it running, it increases something called your... Uh, it increases something called your signature radius. And without going into too much detail, your signature radius is just basically a measure of how big your ship is to other people's sensor systems. The larger your signature radius, the easier you are to hit, generally speaking. The smaller your signature radius, the harder you are to hit. So if you're running around with a micro-warp drive, yeah, you're going to be faster, but you're also going to be bigger. So kind of be careful about that. And 
and these real guns hold on I'm not approaching the correct thing and these rail guns can only hit out to about seven kilometers. Ignore Wolf or whatever the name of this pirate is. He's way too far away and he's set to disappear anyway. Uh, what am I supposed to be doing here? Oh, I already have the secret documents. Okay. And did I bookmark? Yes. Yes, I did. I know I bookmarked this location <clears throat> because there's a thumbtack icon here. Time to return to Doc. Now, remember from the last episode, I returned to a bookmark that I had called My Wreck, because the wreck of my ship was still there. It lasts for two hours, um, or until it gets salvaged, whichever happens first. So, what I intend to do after I finish this chain of missions, I will then demonstrate salvaging. I'll put a couple of salvagers, uh, probably more like four salvagers on this Atron, and actually go to one of those bookmarks and salvage all the wrecks. I won't waste your time by doing all of those sites on screen, but I, I'll show you one of them, just so that you see how that's done. Complete mission. Request mission. Uh, warp to the Dead Space area, find the Stargate, and approach it. Yeah, that'll be easy. <clears throat> In retrospect, I probably, sh uh, for the first episode, I probably should have tried getting a micro warp drive instead of an afterburner to cover that 120 kilometers of distance. Uh, because I noticed after the fact that new characters start off with the skill necessary to fit a micro warp drive. On the other hand, however, given how fast you can go with a micro warp drive, you would definitely want to turn it off uh, before trying to fight anything, because otherwise you're going way too fast for your own uh, tracking gun, uh, for your own tracking. There's no fighting to be involved here. I'll just bookmark this as a safe spot. So with a micro warp, trying to orbit with a micro warp drive on um, has the issue that. Um, has the issue that you're going to go so fast your own guns cannot hit the target. All right, the, it says down here, the mission has been completed. Report back to your agent. Here's one of those cases where you'll probably want local channel expanded a little bit. And of course, there's a green check mark here indicating the mission is completed. Basically, that Stargate does environmental damage to you once you get close enough. I don't think I got actu was actually hit, though, because um, between triggering it and the damage pulse actually occurring, I think I moved out of range too fast. Um, the pirate wants to meet with me. Meet the pirate at the repair outpost. Follows instructions. Report back. Easy.
Now, if you want, you can go ahead and read through all of this text. You have the time. Um, I'm not going to waste your time, however. The th next thing you need to do is destroy the pirate ship. For now, I will be making my way back to base in my capsule. Alright. Bookmark the wreck. Dock. And just to be clear on how I'm bookmarking that wreck, uh, veteran players like myself, those of us who have been around for years, these things used to be called bookmarks. These thumbtack icons that I keep going on about. Um, they used to be called bookmarks. Nowadays, they're called uh, locations or saved locations. Your warp drive in EVE Online cannot be used to warp to arbitrary locations in space. To use your warp drive, you must actually specify a destination. So there is no command along the lines of get the hell out of here. You have to actually decide where it is you want to go. You cannot warp without a destination. Uh, hold on. Destroy Wolf's Outpost. Hmm. I remember this mission being a little bit harder than the rest of... than in some of the other missions... I'll accept, but let me take a look at my wallet. First of all, I've got 1.3 million esque. Not a problem. Uh, let me see if I can get another 125 millimeter. I can. There's one slightly larger size of railgun. Oh, right. The 150s. All right. I'd have to go on a shopping trip to get them at a reasonable price. All right. I'll stick with the 125 millimeter. So I'll buy one more 125mm because I want to hit a little bit harder. The big difference, these are both frigate size railguns. The 75mm Gatling rail and the 125mm railgun. Um, so they're both frigate size railguns. The difference between these is that the 125mm railgun hits a little harder, reaches out a little further, but also has a slightly worse tracking speed. Yeah, I have everything. Uh, they also gave me a, civ a civilian thermal dissipation field as a reward. I guess I'll throw that on. So now that I'm in space, uh, let me open up my fitting window again. So as part of your fitting window, you have a section on defense. Um, and it's going to say how many hit points you have on each layer. The shields, the armor, the structure. And for the shields, it'll also tell you how long it takes the shields to recharge on their own. From 0% to roughly around 98 point something percent. Um... It'll also tell you your resistances to each type of damage on each layer. So you've got 12 resistances. Structure, armor, and shields for each of electromagnetic, thermal, kinetic, and explosive. I'm going to turn on this module, and my shield thermal resistance just went up. And there are a hell of a lot of large collidable structures, so I'm going to right-click one of these, remove large collidable structure from overview. CCP, please. All right. I can't activate this next acceleration gate uh, until I kill all these hostiles here. They're going to start coming closer to me. Uh, I can hit to about 10 kilometers. I can still shoot from further than the stated falloff range. The optimal range just means um, I'm not going to lose 
probability to hit just because of distance beyond uh, if the target is within 4950 uh, meters. I might still miss the target that close because it's going around me in circles, but I'm not going to miss because it's too far away. The fall-off range within 11 kilometers means that at about 11 kilometers, I have a one-half chance to hit the target. Assuming the target is stationary. Which, you know what? While I'm shooting these things, I'm also going to left... Uh, let me start shooting him. I guess I'll explain the overview uh, during the next warp. Because you can see from the overview these how, how far away these enemies are from me. They're about 12 kilometers right now and getting closer. But you can also see how fast they're moving in a couple of different ways, uh, which I'll show you soon. And let me hit Control r to reload my guns, right-click a wreck. Very good. And let me activate the acceleration gate. Oh, by the way, the tooltip, uh, the pop-up will say um, the local security... Um, some of the stuff you're going to find is contraband. Don't loot it. Uh, it turns out that's wrong. It was supposed to be applied to a different mission, and besides which, the rules on contraband on what items are contraband have changed. So it's not even correct at all. All right. Oh, you know what? Here's a good place to talk about the overview. Uh, let me first clear the Corelli initiates since those are the weaker targets. Why am I going away? I'm going to turn on the micro warp. I've just issued an orbit command around one of the sentries. I just turned on the micro warp drive and turned it off again so it'll only run for one pulse. Sometimes your ship accident, uh, accidentally gets a wrong movement order. Maybe you misclick or something, and you'll notice your ship is starting to drift off in some direction away from the, where it's supposed to be. That's not the target I wanted to shoot. That's the target I wanted to shoot. All right, let me shoot this sentry and orbit this other sentry. There we go. Now, I'm going to left-click once in the background and tap O. Shortcuts, window, overview settings. That's not a default shortcut. All right. I can instead click this icon here, open overview settings. Uh, go to the columns tab. And there are some columns you'll want to turn on. Um, here I'll introduce you to velocity, radial velocity, and angular velocity. Uh, oh, right, these are stationary guys, so they don't count as having a velocity. Interesting. You must be kidding me. Alright, I forgot about that. Alright, but basically, here's a demonstration of how... I'm circling around this defense sentry so it can't hit me. If I stop my ship and just sit here and twiddle my thumbs, watch what happens. Now my shields are starting to go down significantly faster. Notice how they're going down with each hit. Whereas if I start orbiting again... It misses me completely. All 
All right, so that's a demonstration of the fact that if you're going in circles around someone fast enough for their guns, um, they can't hit you. Keep in mind the reverse is also true, which is why I have my micro warp drive off right now. The micro warp drive is very useful for covering distance quickly. Uh, but it's not good for fighting in orbit. Very good. As long as these wrecks are nearby, I will actually try to loot the containers. Generally speaking, things exploding in EVE Online does not actually pose a threat to you. This is not Star Trek Online, where a warp core breach from a dying ship will deal damage to you. Uh, right click, this is a separate cluster of wrecks. Done. Go back to station. Oh, um, just as a note, if you like mining... Oh, never mind, I thought there were asteroids here. Never mind. Sometimes you will find mineable asteroids inside of mission space where the mission has nothing whatsoever to do with mining. Um, so on some occasions, before you turn in the mission, you want to go back out with a mining ship and actually mine those asteroids, if you like mining. But apparently that is not the case on this particular, on step six of cash flow for Capsuleers. Complete the mission, request the next mission, destroy the pirates, and come back. All right, very simple. Drop off the loot I picked up. Uh, I will want to reload my guns, which I can do here. There we go. Now that worked. Hold on, let me make sure I actually, I did not actually accept the mission. I noticed this was an orange offered, not a green accepted. So that's why I hesitated on undocking. It's a good thing I caught that. Otherwise, I'd be looking at this and wondering, why is there no link for warp to location here? The other clue that you for that you undocked forgetting to accept the mission in the first place would be you right click hit empty space and there's no section down here for agent missions. Turn on my thermal resistance module, turn off the micro warp drive again. Stop my ship. I only need to get within 10 kilometers. There we go. I'll approach, micro warp drive off. I don't want to overshoot. They're not all that far away. Control spacebar to stop my ship again. I'm going to change my default keep at range distance to 8,000 meters. And I'm going to keep 8,000 meters from this guy. The Corelli Spy. Keeping at range, Corelli Spy, 8,000 meters. I'll right click a nearby rec, save location, submit. The Corelli initiate is a little close. He's going around me at an angular velocity of 0.18 radians per second. Um, 
r slash s. You can see that in the column header. I, I tend to keep the column header a little condensed. And finally, keep at range on the Corelli initiate. Or not, because... Oh, you know what? Good enough, he's dead. Alright, I'm near something, so it might interfere with my ability to move around. I might bump off of it unexpectedly. Don't want to get stuck in it. So I'm going to move away. And control spacebar to stop my ship. So these angular velocity numbers are actually kind of important. Um, let me right-click and show info. So my 125mm railguns have something called... Hold on. Start shooting the next guy. Here we go. Turret tracking. They have a number called turret tracking. F1. And it's 98.175. F1. Without getting too bogged down in the mathematics, what that 98, uh, the best way to think of that, um, to think of that number, that 98.175 number, is assuming that I'm shooting at a target that's within optimal range of my guns, which in my case is 4,950 meters, about five kilometers. Assuming I'm shooting a target that's within optimal range, I want to, and assuming that I'm shooting at a 40 meter signature radius frigate, yes, there's that concept again, signature radius. Uh, so if I'm shooting a 40 meter signature radius frigate, then I want to keep that frigate at an angular velocity of less than 98 milliradians per second or 0 0.098 radians per second to have at least a one half chance to hit for every shot right. complete mission request the next mission uh, fly to the hotel retrieve the vips if something is amiss then report back to your agent with the details amiss what would possibly go amiss But yeah, assume if I'm trying to shoot a 40 meter signature radius frigate, and that 40 meters is a very arbitrary number um, for reasons I don't want to go into because this episode would get way too long. Uh, but if I'm shooting 40 meter signature radius frigate that's within optimal range of my guns, then I need to keep it below an angular velocity of 0 0.098 radians per second or 98 milliradians per second. So that's the best way to think of this turret tracking number 98. If the target is bigger than a frigate, like say it's a cruiser, three times the size of a frigate, then I multiply that 98 by 3. So I need to keep a cruiser below roughly 300 meters per second. I'm going to just fly past this. And boom! I just took a pulse of damage. Uh, the mission does not require, uh, I'm just going to bookmark this as a safe spot. The mission doesn't require me to kill them. Uh, you can if you want, you can if you want to. I'm just going to leave. So that I don't take up your time. So if I'm shooting a cruiser that's three times bigger than a frigate, then I need to multiply that number by 3. So I want to keep it below uh, 290 some odd milliradians per second. If I'm shooting a battleship, which is usually 10 times the size of a frigate, alright, so if I'm shooting a battleship, then I need to keep it below 980 milliradians per second. Alright, so that's the best way to think of that turret tracking number.
Missiles follow a completely different mechanic. Uh, I may demonstrate that um, in some other episode. All right, destroy the narcotics warehouse. Easy enough. I should reload my guns. Now, here's another thing I noticed about the tutorials. So, as a Galente, doing the Galente to, uh, career funnel hubs, they gave me uh, an armor repairer. Most Galente ships are uh, armor tanked. All, right, all well and good. Uh, the odd thing, though, is that the one of the earlier missions gave me a civilian thermal dissipation field. That's a shield resistance module. Generally speaking, in EVE Online, you want to stick to a, a single tanking type. You want to set up to take battle da You want to set up to take battle damage on your armor or on your shields, not both. So my current setup is disjoint. If I'm going to be using an armor repairer, I really should have an armor resistance module. If I'm going to be using a shield booster, then I should have a shield resistance module to go with it. So having this, being given this armor repairer and a shield resistance module is a little wonky. Double left click in space, turn off the micro warp drive, stop my ship, close enough, open fire. Double left click in their direction. I could use the orbit command to get closer if I wanted to, because I set a default orbit distance of 4,000 meters. You know what? I should set that bigger. That should be, for my guns, that should be 8,000 meters. You know what? If I'm taking shield damage, I should turn on that shield resistance module, as long as I have it. Some resistance modules need to be activated. You need to click them on. They need to be cycling uh, and consuming capacitor energy in order to function. Some resistance modules are passive. Uh, they, you fit them to your ship and they just work. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to... Let me right-click General, load Defaults to Tab, General. There we go. There are the large collidable structures again. I need to destroy the Narcotics Warehouse. Is that correct? Let me read the details again. Uh, destroy the Narcotics Warehouse and report back to your agent. Yep, that's a Narcotics Warehouse. And did I bookmark a wreck around here? I did not. Right click, save location, submit. There we go. All right, let's see if anybody's selling armor hardeners here in Clelanon. These NPCs are probably using uh, railguns or blasters against me. Uh, all right, I've got a green check mark for the mission. I'm going to return to dock. Uh, they're using railguns or blasters against me, uh, or NPC arbitrary NPC abilities that are themed as railguns and blasters. Uh, so they're doing kinetic and thermal damage to me. Let me see if there are any... No, there are no armor kinetic hardeners here. Uh, what about thermal? No.
Oh, well, I'll have to deal... Unless I want to go on a shopping trip, I'll have to deal with what I have. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Find Wolf and take him out once and for all. Accept. Close. Uh... So what are my options? All right, I can't... F I was thinking of fitting on an afterburner. You can only run a micro warp drive or an afterburner at any given time. You can fit both, but only one of them can be turned on. That's known as dual prop. Uh, because, again, micro warp drives and afterburners have different advantages and disadvantages. Um, but my ship's power grid will not support that. It's too small. The power grid is too small, rather. Frigates can be made to dual prop. Why did it... Oh, set destination. So this is a couple of jumps away. Um, so in that case, I'm going to right-click the station and add waypoint. And you know what? I'm going to be doing some salvaging work. And I only have one salvager. I want more than one. Uh, da, 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 da. The ones here in Clolanon are a little bit pricey, but not too bad. I'm up to 2.3 million isk, so sixty, so seventy thousand for instead of fifty thousand should be okay. In your particular area, um, you probably want to keep an eye out on the market uh, to see if there are any uh, low-cost salvagers. You'll want three in total. You will you were probably given one salvager already, like I was. Um, so you'll probably want another two or three, depending on how many high slots your uh, frigate has. So as long as you're out and about... Um... Keep an eye out on the market for that. Turn on the resistance module. Reload my guns. Here's an acceleration gate. Oh, give me a break. Remove large colloidal structure. There we go. One pulse of the micro warp drive and double left click in that direction. And I will control left click each of these guys. Control space bar because I don't want to overshoot. Good. I'm using F, uh, F1 to toggle on my guns. Uh, so this is F1, F2, F3, F4. Alt F1, Alt F2, Alt F3. Control F1, Control F2, Control F3. Oh, that's right. I need to get a little closer. I'm going to want to right-click, save location. There we go. There we go. Uh, angular velocity is below, is at around 24 milliradians per second. Not bad. Keeping in mind, 98 milliradians per second is my tracking speed against frigate-sized targets. Uh, 
Very good. Activate the acceleration gate. I will pulse the micro warp drive once just to cover the distance more quickly and control R to reload my guns. Now the hotkey for activate gate by default is D. So you could, for example, hold down the D key and left click the acceleration gate. So I can try that right now. I hold down D, I left click, and the gate is locked. I need to kill all these enemies who are located way over there. That's why I have a micro warp drive. All right, good enough. Uh, I may be a little close. I have to wait for this to finish cycling before I can tell it to fire again. Otherwise, the operation just silently fails. Right-click a wreck, since this is a new room separated by acceleration gates. Double left click to approach. And, oh, there's something in the way. I'm going to double left click over here. Turn off the micro warp drive. Stop my ship. That's close enough. Now, they're a little far away. Fall off is at 11 kilometer. Optimal plus fall off, technically speaking, is at 11 kilometers. So beyond 11 kilometers, I can still hit them, but the probability to hit is less than one half. The further out they are than that, the further down the chance to hit goes. All right, good. Hold down D, left click the acceleration gate. There we go. Control R to reload my guns. All right, I'm going to orbit the stasis tower. First things first. You'll notice that you now have a couple of icons here. One is sensor dampening, the other is webified. So, the wolf's stasis tower, if you right-click on this, Garista's stasis tower, look at, you can actually look at the thing that's stasis webifying you. And what that means is that it's reducing the maximum sublight velocity of my ship. I can only go about 120 meters per second right now. You know what? Let me keep at range from the stolen Navy ship. Yeah, his angular velocity is getting really high. Ah, good. Problem solved. And I'm going to right-click one of these and save location. So, opening up my fitting window again... Here, next to navigation, my max speed is 120.8 meters per second. That's not the normal condition for my ship. That's because I'm being stasis webified, so I can't go as fast. Control spacebar, I'm within optimal already. So, because I can't move as fast, um, it takes me longer to get anywhere, but keep in mind... Angular velocity is a measure of how quickly two things are moving around each other. If I'm moving very slowly, that means angular velocities will also have a tendency to be kind of low. Depending on what my enemies are doing, of course. 
Um, now that the stasis tower is destroyed, my max speed is back up to 483 meters per second. All right. So being slowed down makes me easier to hit. In the case of turrets, it means the angular velocity will be lower. Uh, all right, I'm done with that. Uh, let's go back to Luce. So being stasis webified is just an ex one example of the many status effects that can happen to you. You probably also noticed an icon for something called sensor dampening, and what that that what they were doing was they were reducing this number. So my targeting range is normally about 26 kilometers. That's how close I have to get to something in order to be able to target lock it. Um, sensor dampening can reduce that, so I can't target lock from as far away. So I have to be much closer to keep it uh, to maintain a target lock on someone which could be potentially fatal if they've got short rate, powerful short-range weapons. So if I have to get closer to have a target lock on them, that also means I have to be close enough that their weapons, short-range weapons, can do more damage to me. There's also a number here for scan resolution, which for whatever strange reason, Crowd Control Productions has chosen a unit of millimeters. The unit is meaningless. But basically, the larger the number, the faster you can target lock things. Uh, frigates have a much higher scan resolution than battleships. So talk to the agent, complete the mission, and that completes cash flow for capsuleers. Uh, what I will now do... Doo -doo 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 -doo, unload the guns... Right click, clear group. I don't need the guns anymore. I don't need this, don't need this. I want to right click the salvager. I want to get. <clears throat> Actually, hold on. How much fitting space does this need? 20 teraflops each. Uh... Yes, I can fit four. All right. So I will get another three salvagers. There we go. Now, I'm going to right-click and select one of these wrecks. Corelli Agent Wreck. Doesn't matter which one, I'm going to go to each of them in turn. But I'm going to demonstrate with this one. So, warping to this bookmark, just like in last episode, all the mission scenery is gone. All that's left behind are the NPC wrecks. Um, and if I target lock these wrecks, I can fire salvagers at each of these things. Now, these salvagers uh, have a probability to succeed, which for a new player is going to be kind of low. Uh, it's only 15%, so you might wind up uh, having these things cycle and cycle and cycle and cycle and cycle while you're trying to salvage things. Hold on. I overshot a little bit. So I'm looting each of these uh, wrecks for anything that might be useful or that I might be able to sell. Uh... From the new player experience, you would have only gotten metal scraps, so I didn't have you bother with salvaging anything in the new player's experience. But now that you're in the career funnel hubs, and with any other missions you run in the future, it's going to be a different story. Uh, it's actually worthwhile uh, to actually go and uh, salvage all, these, all this stuff. Need to be closer than 5,000 meters, all right. 
All right. Um, the reason you'll want to do this, uh, if you click on each thing one at a time, hold on, let me move on to the next cluster of racks here. Pulse the micro warp drive. Uh, if you just click on empty space in your inventory, it'll tell you the estimated price of everything that's in your cargo hold. Here, let me start the process of salvaging these two. Loot all. There we go. All right. Uh, so I have an estimated half million interstellar credits worth of stuff in my cargo hold. If you click on something, it'll tell you the estimated price for it. Um, the damaged artificial neural network is worth almost nothing. Uh, the contaminated nanite compound, however, is much more valuable. That's 146,000 is estimated. So you can right-click, view market details. You can see buy and sell orders for this thing in your region. Um, so if you wanted to buy one of these things, it'd be 134,000 disc here. If you wanted to sell, it'd be 120,000 disc. Um, the reason any player would want this stuff is because rigs, just like minerals are the raw ingredient for making modules or ammunition or ships, salvage materials like this are the raw ingredient for something called rigs uh, which go in these slots these are rig slots over here i haven't made use of any of them uh, it's not necessary to go around rigging ships quite this early uh, in eve online when you're just starting out but later on you will want to start looking at making uh, at getting rigs for your ship and some people manufacture rigs and that needs salvaged materials so that's why the salvage can be very valuable the loot can also be valuable uh, but so is the salvage and once you're out of the new player experience it becomes much more worthwhile so now you've seen a demonstration of that i'm not going to waste your time doing that on screen for every single one of the bookmarks i just did um but now you see how that works. I'm going to right-click this bookmark, edit location. I'm going to rename it to safe spot. Now I'm going to go look for another rec bookmark and warp to that. And I'm going to do this each one at a time until I clear all of them. That'll take me less than an hour. But having seen it once, you now know what to do. So I'm going to end the episode here. Uh, for the next episode, we will get started on... I have to think about it. Maybe the exploration chain, maybe we'll get started on business and industry at the same time. We'll see. But in the meantime, thank you for watching.